All right, welcome back everyone. So we're going to talk about the end walls. So as they're called, they are the end of the hoop houses on both ends and you create a wall there with them. Uh, whether that be with plastic, uh, sometimes there's hard sided construction. There's also uh, black and white plastic. Sometimes where light doesn't come in depending on what you're growing or, or, or what you're trying to do with the actual structure itself. Uh, the end walls will support uh, doors, windows, ventilation, uh, different things, depending again on the purpose of your hoop house or, or greenhouse and what you're going to do with it. The other thing an end wall does is it keeps wind from getting up and underneath the roof or the other end wall of your structure. So anytime that we've ever seen a hoop house um, fail out on social media, it's a lot of times because there's either damage or a hole or they haven't built an end wall at all. And in essence, they've just built this big parasail that then can be lifted up because of the uplift of the wind underneath there. So you're basically telling the wind, hey, you can't get in here and cause any damage, just like you wouldn't want the front of an airplane to uh, not have a window on it. You like that? Mm -hmm. I do too. All right. Or driving a car without a windshield. Yes. Yes. So sometimes you can see a polycarbonate in wall. Uh, there's all kinds of different polycarbonate. There's U panel, there's R panel, there's corrugated, which you'll typically find at the big box stores. And there's also a twin wall polycarbonate uh, that has been specifically designed for greenhouse applications. The reason Bootstrap Farmer doesn't carry that, and we can get it, but we have found that shipping that all across the country is opening up to uh, a lot of damage. Now, that's not to say that that's going to happen to you, but Bootstrap Farmer specifically specializes in very affordable yet very strong greenhouses that you can put together yourself. And that off that end wall is typically seen in more of a greenhouse situation where you see uh, more automated controls. Again, we're more about seasonal extension and four season growing with uh, crop selection and things like that. So the end wall, like I said, you would typically see in a greenhouse scenario. And, and I would also say that uh, any type of polygal or corrugated or like coroplast material, eight mil thick is also very expensive. Right. Uh, and for a lot of folks that are either gonna furlough this or use their hoop house for this four season growing, that expense is simply not needed. Uh, so we're not anti-polycarbonate. We just don't need it in most of the applications that we do here at Bootstrap Farmer. So next is the doors. And people always say, well, what kind of door do I need to put on here? And the first thing that we're going to ask is, or what type of operation are you going to do? What type of equipment are coming in? And by equipment, I do mean a tractor, but I also don't mean a tractor. And equipment can be a harvesting cart, a wheelbarrow, uh, irrigation supplies, maybe a backpack sprayer, uh, maybe a jang seed, or whatever the case may be. The door has to accommodate, uh, for instance, I had a, a bed prepper, which was one of those big uh, wheeled preppers like that, but the, the bar was pretty long. I mean, it was, I mean, you could drag your knuckles on it. So if I had built a door, anything less than 36 inches, it would have been this big pain every time I went in and out. Uh, secondly, uh, crop selection is gonna have something to do with that. I had already mentioned about the double doors or, or how the doors face out. Uh, if you're dealing with vining crops, because you're going to have to take, you know, 60 and 70 foot vines out of here, it's much easier to do that through a double door than it is a single door. A lot of people like to use the door for ventilation. I'm not a huge fan of that because, uh, like we said, the end wall is there to keep wind from getting up and in there, and you're kind of susceptible to that. I'd much rather you see ventilation uh, either with sidewalls or a gable vent that's going to help protect a lot of that wind from getting out and passively dump anything that has uh, accumulated at the top of the hoop house. So the doors, they can be like ours, which is a welded steel frame with a welded steel door on hinges and the correct hardware. Make sure that your hardware has it where you can get out from the inside versus rather just latching at the front and then you're kind of stuck in there and you gotta poke a hole in your plastic. So just keep in mind that there are special, there are special pieces of hardware designed to fit your greenhouse so you can have in, so you can get in and get out. So the other thing that the end wall can do, like Julian said earlier, is give you a frame to support vents, windows, anything. 
Basically, we don't know what you're going to do with your structure. That's part of why Hoop House is so great is because it is so versatile and you can do so many things with it. But having these vertical uprights uh, going up, not so much to support the weight on top of the hoop, but just to support the door and the window that you may have. That's what you're looking for. It also gives you a place to attach lock channel and attach your plastic and keep that thing really tight. So it does serve multiple functions. One thing that we do as well is we use ground posts on both sides of the door. So the door is not just floating with the end wall. It actually ties into the ground and we have verticals that run all the way to the top of the hoops. So it's very rigid where your door is. It's not just floating or flapping in the wind. And you'll see that floating and flapping as you're building out like a, a wood structure where you you may not have a ground post to tie into. So I, I've been to a lot of hoop houses. You'll shut the door and the bottom will kind of vibrate and juggle because it's not attached to the ground. So I really like what we've done with ours because of those extra, extra connection points. You know, not only is it good for the door and opening in and out, opening in and out all day long, depending on, you know, what's going on, but it's also, you know, two to four other points of connection, six, if you're uh, using our 30 footer to keep that wind from really pushing in that bottom and getting in from underneath. Best case scenario, you're preventing less draft. You know, worst case, you know, it, it's opening yourself up to a catastrophic wind event. All right, so just a couple extra bonus tips on the end walls, and this is primarily thinking about the door. Number one, uh, a lot of people, and I do like this, especially if you have a DIY option or something like that, and you're having to make your own end wall, is they will buy a pre-hung door to, number one, save time, and number two, buying a door is better than constructing one out of two by fours, which tend to get real heavy over time and will wind up sagging. So if you do get a pre-hung door, just know that the, the door, although it's metal clad and it's designed for being on the exterior of a house, that the door frame itself more than likely is not because that door frame is going to be hidden behind sheetrock, siding, and on the other side, it's going to have the drywall and the paint. So make sure that you treat that door frame with uh, some kind of high grade paint and keep the elements off of it. Uh, number two, the hardware for the door itself. So Bootstrap Farmer, we use um, you know a custom welded frame, custom welded door with uh, hardware that was purposefully designed for this hoop house, being able to get in and out. You know our hinges, our hinges are made in Ohio to our specs, and they're very much our hinges designed specifically for this door. But if you're not using one of our doors, consider upgrading your door hardware to more of a commercial line. And the difference is, if you go to the big box stores. You have a commercial line of hardware and you have like a homeowner grade of, hard, of hardware. And even though some of these homeowner grades, you know, certainly you have the economy in the middle road and the very nice one, even the very nice one isn't constructed in a way to uh, put up with the demands of a commercial handle or door or even a hinge because they're designed to be opened up all day, every day, as long as a commercial property is open, even on the interior versus a homeowner, you may come in and out your door you know, three or four times a day. It's it's not designed for constant use. Because your hoop house, A, is somewhat of a commercial application. You may have employees coming in and out all day long. It's certainly going to be in the elements. It's certainly going to uh, have uh, temperature fluctuations where a, cheap, a cheaper metal may expand and contract a whole lot. So just a consideration to go ahead and update your hardware or upgrade your hardware if you're using a pre-hung door, especially on the handles. So on your end walls, I would say the last little bit of thing is if, if you get a kit from us and the end walls are obviously included with the all metal, we tell you step by step how to build it. We see like we follow a lot of Facebook groups and just kind of keep an eye on you know what people are asking and that kind of thing. One of the number one question is, how do I build my end walls? How do I attach the wood to the frame? Um, you should be able to find with whoever you get your kit from. Uh, at least a page or two of how to accomplish that. But just know that there's so many different ways and there's there's some wrong ways to do it, but by and large, there's so many right ways to do it. And you just have to, uh, hopefully you have a little bit of construction background, or at least you've been able to watch plenty of videos. Don't let the end wall intimidate you. Don't let going from wood to metal intimidate you. You know, the tools are just slightly different, but it's super, it's super easy to do. Just find the style that works best for you. Read the instruction manual. You know, if, if you didn't get a kit from us, call the company that you got a kit from and see what they recommend. 
and I'm sure you'll be just fine. Up next, we're going to talk about the hoop house doors in particular uh, in relationship to the end wall. We'll see you then.